Hi class, uh, this lecture starts your video on chapter 7, which is going to be talking about similarity. Now in this section, we're going to move into section 7.1 and talk about ratios and proportions. So we have four objectives in this video. The first is we want to write ratios as fractions, that's really easy. Then we want to write ratios in the simplest forms, that's just simplifying fractions, also really easy. Then the third and fourth one are might be new. So it's understand and work with extended ratios. Now, an extended ratio is just a ratio of three or more things. And then finally, what we want to do is we want to solve proportions. And that's going to be introducing a topic called cross multiplying. All right, so ratios is fractions. So a ratio, all it is is the quotient of two quantities. In fact, ratios are no different from fractions, except that ratios are sometimes written using a notation other than fractional notation. So for example, the ratio of one to two can be written as the following three things. It can be written as one to two, right like this, literally with the word two, or as a fraction, one over two, or this notation right here with these, with these dots, this is also one to two. So all these ratios are literally read as the ratio of one to two, no matter how I show it. If I write it like this as a fraction or in this ratio notation here. All right, so the order of the quantity is important when writing ratios. So to write a ratio as a fraction, you write the first number of the ratio as the numerator, so the top of the fraction, and the second number as the denominator or the bottom part of the fraction. All right, so, so let's do an example. So I want to write the ratio of 12 to 17 using fractional notation. All right, well, here's how you would do that. All it is is the ratio of the first number 12 goes in the top, the numerator, and the, the second number goes in the bottom, or the denominator right here. So the ratio is 12 to 17, just like that. Very simple. All right, let's work some more harder ones. All right, so we want to write each ratio, I've got three of them here, as a fraction in the simplest form. Now, what's really important here as you do this is here I have dollars to dollars, here I have feet to inches, so that's weird. Here I have centimeters to meters. So you've got to pay attention to the, uh, the units here. All right, so first one here. So write each um, ratio as a fraction, and what we have to do is that we have to convert any unlike units to like units. So here I have $15 to $10. Well, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cancel the units. All right, so ratios here are unitless here, so the, the dollars cancels out. Then you're going to write 15 as 3 times 5, 10 as 2 times 5. You're going to notice next that the 5s are just going to cancel. And $15 to $10 is just a ratio of 3 to 2. That's it. All right, let's try B. So 4 feet to 24 inches. Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to convert that feet to inches. So 1 foot is equivalent of 12 inches. So you have to multiply there. All right. But what we're actually first going to do is simplify here to make it a little bit easier. All right. So... This right here is going to cancel the 12 inches, it's going to cancel the 24, making it a 2. And then the inches to inches will cancel. So you're literally just left with 4 over 2, or 4 to 2 ratio, which will simplify to a 2 to 1 ratio. That's it. All right, let's do this last one, C. Centimeters to meters. Well, first off, there's 100 centimeters in a meter, so just simplify like that. The next thing you're going to notice is going to cancel out is the centimeters cancel here. Seven times 100 is 700, and then 500 to 700, the hundreds cancel, and that ratio is just five to seven, just like that, that's it. All right, let's use ratios with geometry. So you're given the following rectangle. All right, let's find the ratio of its width to its length, and then let's find the ratio of its length to its perimeter. So the first one here, the ratio of the width to length, well, width here is 5 feet. Length goes on the bottom, right, because the first, the first um, quantity goes on the top of the fraction. The second quantity goes on the bottom. So it's 5 feet to 7 feet. But remember here, the units will cancel, and the ratio is literally just 5 to 7. All right, now if I want to find the ratio of its length to its perimeter, the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to find the perimeter. Well, remember, the perimeter would just be the sum of all the sides. So the perimeter is just 24 feet. So the length to the perimeter, so the length is 7 feet, the perimeter is 24 feet, the units cancel, all right, and the ratio is just 7 to 24, and there's no nothing you can cancel there. All right, an extended ratio. 
So an extended ratio compares three or more numbers. So an extended ratio, it looks like this, it's A to B to C, is the ratio of the first two numbers, all right, A to B, the ratio of the last two numbers, B to C, and the ratio of the first and last numbers, A to C. All right, so it's, it's the ratio of how, how they all interact. So an extended ratio of three numbers is often used to provide information about triangles because there's three sides to a triangle. So the length, let's do an example. The lengths of the sides of a triangle are in the extended ratio 3, 5, 6. So it would be what we call a 3, 5, 6 triangle. All right. The perimeter of the triangle is 98 units. What is the length of each side? Huh. All right. So how would we do this problem? First, you want to sketch the triangle, and you use the given extended ratios to label the sides with expressions for their lengths, and the perimeter will help us find the exact side lengths. So here's how I'll do it. I know that they, they have a ratio of 3 to 5 to 6. Well, the unknown quantity that I multiply the 3, the 5, and the 6 by, I'll just let that be x. And then how I would solve for x? Well, I know the perimeter here is going to be 98, so I'm just going to sum. 3x plus 5x plus 6x equals 98. When I do that, I get 14x. Divide each side by 14. x is equal to 7. But now that's not the final answer. What you have to do then is find the lengths of each side. So the side lengths are 3x, so 3 times 7 is 21 units. 5x, 35 units. And finally, 6x, 6 times 7 gets me 42 units. Right? And that's how you would use the extended ratio there with triangles. All right, the next thing I want to do is solving proportions. So an equation stating that two ratios are equal is called a proportion. So the first and last numbers in the proportion are the extremes, and the middle two numbers are the means. So the next thing here, if you want to look at it, is the extremes here are the first number and the first ratio, and the last number and the second ratio, and the means is the middle part. Or if I have 2 to 3 is equal to 4 to 6, the extremes are on the end are in the middle here. So the cross products are the products of the means and also the products of the extreme. So like when I multiply here, watch what happens. 3 times 4 gets me 12 is equal to 2 times 6, which also gives me 12. So the cross products here are equal. So the cross product property actually here in words, in a true proportion, the product of the extremes equals the products of the means. So in symbols, if we have A to B, is equal to C to D, and obviously B and D can't be zero because you can't divide by zero. A times D is equal to B times C. Or, as I said here, two to three is equal to four to six. Using your, your cross product here, two times six is equal to three times four, or 12 is equal to 12. All right, let's work an example. So let's solve each proportion for the variable. So I've got two proportions here. So to solve this, whenever you have a fraction is equal to a fraction, you always want to think of this, this cross multiplying. So in A here, how we'll tackle this? You're going to cross multiply here, and you're going to cross multiply here. So 6 times 4 is equal to 5 times x. So 6 times 4 gives me 24 is equal to 5x. Just divide by 5. And here x, that unknown variable here, is equal to 24 over 5. And it's okay to get a fraction as a solution. That's not a big deal. Over here, same process, cross multiply here. So you're going to go 3 times y plus 4 is equal to 9 times y. Finally here, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to distribute. So 3y plus 12 is equal to 9y. Let's subtract the 3y over to get 6y. Finally divide by 6, and you get y is equal to and uh, you can plug these values in. I'll leave that to you. But if you plug y is equal to 2 into here, and if you plug um, 24 fifths in for x over here and then simplify both fractions, you'll get the same fractions. You'll get equivalent fractions. 